All right, here we are, ladies and gents. I hope you can't hear my cat screaming behind my door. He wants attention, and I'm not going to give him attention, even though it's a lovely, lovely cat, because I am going to focus on the Sage of Empires 2 game for you. We've got Loey the Legends for the first time in a bit, um, at least in terms of like stream content, because I was away for a while. We've had Titans League going on, so we are all in on low elo. Trying to get some good games here. It looks like there's a lot of sheep in uh, this particular generation of Mega Random. And you gotta love Mega Random because the game's already kind of ridiculous and confusing and hard to play. And then, of course, the map generations make this a lot more difficult. Man, Mad Girl here in the red. Mad Girl 5054 is putting every single sheep right underneath that TC. They like the shade, guys. They like the shade. It's very sunny out there. It's only fair. That the sheep get to stay in the shade every now and then. Uh, so yeah, Mad Girl here in the red playing as the Khmer. In the blue, also slaying a bunch of shaded sheep is Hugs. Uh, playing as the Mongols. And if you were going to pick a civilization for this map, you would... Oh man, the sheep's stressing me out. Guys, move your sheep away a little bit. Like, get some space between the sheep because they all... All the fills bump into each other. <laughs> um... Sorry, let me complete my thought. If you're going to pick a Civ for Mega Random, Mongols is probably the best. Um, first off, there can be a lot of hunts on Mega Random, and Mongols hunt faster. Uh, but even if there's not a lot of hunts, Mongols have a scouting bonus. So for a map that generates in a bunch of random different ways, it makes sense to have more scouting, right? So you can see what's happening and make some decisions on the map. Uh, so, so far, the starts have been pretty solid. Just a lot of sheep getting slaughtered. It doesn't seem like either player knows or seems to care that there is actually decay on animals. So, for maximum efficiency, it's best to try and eat one at a time. But we're at the 500 elos, where that doesn't really matter. I mean, it does matter, but it's not something they think about. It's already difficult enough to do everything else. And this kind of brings back memories for me. Uh, the anxiety that I felt while watching Blue's Sheep two minutes ago is anxiety I feel because I now know better. So it's kind of fun to watch people who don't know better and learn a little bit. Hopefully some people learn from Lower the Legends, but, you know, have a good time. So to the rest of the map, there's uh, three golds around the town center, and then there's two stones. So we have uh, 12 tiles of gold and nine tiles of stone. It's all kind of in the same spot. It's all very close to you. So I could see a lot of villagers being on these stone and golds and not really being too exposed. Because uh, often you're going to have like golds and stones here, 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 spread out away from your base. But all the rest of the golds and stones seem to be the ones that are going to be more exposed. Uh, wood is actually going to be the, the biggest long-term concern. And Hugs has Mongol scouting and has scouted pretty decently. But still hasn't seen the giant chunk of wood lines in the middle. And same for red, actually. So these guys are probably like, yo, where's my wood? Their scouting's actually really good. But there's no wood. I insert something that rhymes with wood and good and... Oh, wait. Wood, good, should, could. And anyways, I'm done. Yeah, just something to think about. It's not like this is a, an extreme wood shortage. Uh, you know, you don't need to call the doctor and take a take a pill, but uh, just something to think about as you age, I suppose, in this game. <laughs> so, what's the meta at 500 Evo? Is it? Are we gonna see rushing? Are we gonna see scouts, maybe? Or is it more of a fast castle? From what I'm seeing from both of them, I'm not seeing a rush be a huge possibility. We haven't seen any boars brought in yet. Uh, we see farming, which is more of a long-term thing. They've got plenty on wood to save up wood for later. Things are pretty chill. So I, I think that might just be a fast castle. But actually, what would be more likely is we do see someone go to Feudal Age very quickly. But then they don't really do anything with it, right? I think that's like every moderately experienced but low elo or low ranked player's favorite build order. Uh, go to the next stage and then be like, oh crap, what do I do with my resources? 
That's that's a good plan. But yeah, so far, Mad Girl is preferring the farms and the uh, berries over the boars. So is it possible that we won't see boars taken at all here? It's interesting how all the sheep were slain, but you're scared of the boars. I guess the sheep don't fight back. The poor sheep, they don't have it in them to fight back. Yeah, Red's a big fan of the farms. Uh, Khmer villagers do not need to drop off their food from their farms at mills or TCs. And that is why Red <laughs> is surrounding the berries with farms. Which honestly looks so nice. <laughs> I hope that Red doesn't do this with other civilizations. I imagine Red thought about this. We do now have a barracks for hugs. On the way to Feudal Age. Going to take boar number two now, and food count should be splendid. Yeah, good job there from Blue. Right next to the TC. Not bad. All right. Um, so Blue found more wood. Didn't find it here, which is actually the closest. Found it way over here. I guess, actually, this wood isn't the closest. It's similar distance. It feels like this is more exposed, but we know where red is. And Blue does not. By the way, this is auto scout from Blue. The scout went to the corner, scouted it very thoroughly. I believe it's auto scout. Is it moving in slightly different directions now? Oh yeah, that's auto scout. Which means the scout will actually run underneath Red's TC very shortly. Oh yeah. Okay, there we go. Do we have a reaction from the mad girl? Just as I expected. No reaction. Red probably doesn't know. Red scout also on auto scout, I believe. Let's watch the movement. Yep, that would be auto scout from Mad Girl. All right. Mad Girl's like, hey, scout, how you doing? We don't fight scouts. Scouts are nice. Scouts are for scouting, guys. It doesn't say warrior. It says scout. So farming count in the long run is a really important statistic. Because when you get past the berries and the boars and the sheep, farms are... That, that's the way that you get food. There are other ways, of course, like fish traps. But, I mean, farming is the most common way of getting food. So, while if you were to look at this and maybe blue has more food... No, blue does not. But let's just say that blue did have more food because of the hunt bonus or whatever. That is That runs out. And at this rank, players are just going to have auto farm on. So, the farms are just going to reseed all the time, forever, if you have the wood. So, if I was a betting man... I would bet on Mad Girl to win this game due to all that food income that's going to happen consistently throughout the rest of this game. Red made a mining camp between the gold and the stone, taking a little bit of stone, taking a little bit of gold, and investing into upgrades. I've said this many times. If you don't really know the timing, so what you should do, when you get to the next stage, get your wood upgrade, get your farm upgrade, and just kind of take it from there. Wheelbarrow's on the way for Mad Girl. We also saw the gold mining upgrade. So red knows to invest into eco upgrades. Blue seems to know a little bit more about the buildings and then the resources required for the next stage. So it's two different approaches. Blue's thinking 800 food is here. I now need 200 gold. And blue already has the buildings. So I'm a little concerned for red because players who build up towards a fast castle with the stable might be thinking about army like step lancers knights but also blue could just choose not to do that at all it's it's this thing we just don't know in Loe the legends we just don't know blue could send all these villagers right now and go to stone and mine nothing else for the next three minutes it's happened before it'll probably happen again i can't really tell you oh if i know red red is an options player red's like all right archer range is cool and then we'll probably see a barracks. And then we'll probably see a stable. Red wants a balanced economy. As of now, Red has villagers collecting every type of resource. And then Red wants tons of buildings. And the way Red wins this game is if the opponent doesn't pressure. And on Red's timetable, when Red feels more comfortable, Red makes some army. The way Red loses this game is if the opponent shows up and rushes. And what... <laughs> Oh my god, guys! <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what I mean about low elo. We never expect what's going to happen. 
there's something I didn't talk about <laughs> on this map generation is that there is only one relic, okay? And it has spawned in the very middle of the map. And Mad Girl is like, I want it. <laughs> Mad Girl is going to build a tower directly next to the relic. I wish there was a way of knowing if that tower was perfectly centered on the map. I'm thinking it's not. I think maybe like a tile or two to the left of the relic would give it better chances, but <laughs> that is so funny. And it's like, he might, there might be someone out there who's like, T90, why is that funny? Like, what are you even talking about? Why are you being so judgmental? I'm not being judgmental, okay? Judgmental person. It's very judgmental of you to think that I'm being judgmental. Thank you. But like... If it was Relic win, if it was Relic victory, if you could win by collecting all the Relics, this would be incredible. But that's not how Ranked works. Unfortunately, I personally think we have, like, Relic and Wonder victory in the game. We have Regicide in the game. Why aren't those things incorporated into Ranked sometime? I, I think this game is a lot of variety that isn't explored in Ranked games. I am very biased because I'm a caster and I think it'd be fun. But anyways... Maybe Red doesn't know that. Red may be disappointed if Red collects that relic later. And there's no relic countdown. But uh, Red's on the way to Castle Age. I didn't notice that because I got distracted by the relic in the tower. Uh, 30 seconds away. And Blue actually had been making scouts this whole time. And not going to Castle Age. So again, not what I would have expected after what I was seeing. I thought for sure that... Blue is just going to go to Castle Age. But instead, Blue's getting armor. Blue's getting bloodlines. And Blue is out here to kill. And Blue sees that villager. Now, this is the villager that built the tower. And he's now going to die. The red does not have loom, which is an important tech here to keep your villagers armored. My tip to everyone out there is get loom before you go feudal. If you just do that, you'll be fine. At least on open maps. And Castle and an Arena, maybe you don't have to do that as much. Oh, God. Oh, Mad Girl. Oh, Mad Girl's gonna lose more. Now, being Khmer, Mad Girl could garrison villagers inside of houses. But Mad Girl hasn't even garrisoned villagers inside of the town center yet. So, Red currently is feeling like a beast. Now, I have a meme which explains the current situation. Did I say Red is feeling like a beast? I don't think she is. I think Blue's feeling like a beast. Guys, notice that Mad Girl, uh, uh, who isn't actually garrisoning or saving the villagers at all, which is making me kind of mad, but she doesn't have the knowledge. Notice, as these villagers get slaughtered, that Blue hasn't created a single vill. So something that Red's doing a really good job of is producing villagers while this is happening. This is obviously horrible. But, you know, the towers are kind of helping. Scout's going to help. Mad Girl's just going to make more towers. Must not know that you can hop inside of these things. So is is a bit fresh to the game. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, this is going to blow your minds, guys. Okay? After Blue's just killed 14, it's about to be 15. It's about to be 16. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. 17, um, 18 villagers, okay? After blue has killed that many villagers, red's kind of okay, kind of. I, I'm i really stretching into the truth here, but because red's still producing more vills. Now, this is the meme I was talking about because blue, blue didn't queue up a villager that entire time. Where's the meme? Where's the meme? That's the meme. I think we all know that feel, okay? But, you know, just something to think about. You know, next time you're killing a bunch of villagers, just, you know, go home and produce a few more. Blue didn't. That whole time, Blue was really enjoying watching the slaughter. And who can blame him? I mean, I personally got very stressed out in that moment. We'll see if Mad Girl can recover from it. But, yeah. Um, 24 villagers versus 30. I, you know, if Mad Girl would have saved even just like five or six more, this is an even game as far as Vil's concerned. It's not, though, because villagers were not protected in the slightest. And, well, Blue says, I want to try that again, because that was super fun. Okay, this is a test. Blue is going to mass more scouts. 
And I'm curious if Blue will produce any Vils while the next wave of Scouts goes out. I'm just going to assume no. But it's something we look for this time. I like Blue's thinking, though. You attack, and now, okay, add a bit more eco. The wooden and the hill is important. Let's drop a town center. Red thinks, well, I'm not good enough to attack my opponent. My opponent is has already shown they're strong enough to attack me. So let's just make more towers. <laughs> um, I'm worried for red. There seems like there's so little confidence here. But, I mean, you know, towers could be nice. I wonder if red knows about a university. Could maybe upgrade the towers. Okay, here we go. Armor. Okay, blue stop producing vills at 35. When Blue starts to move this army, I want to know if Blue does anything else. Blue's done a really good job, all things considered. This is the flow you want in the game. You want, like, army villagers. Army villagers. Blue has a lot of potential here. And Blue is the higher-ranked player of the two. I wonder if Blue knows you can garrison villagers. Not to be too harsh here, but if Blue knows you can put villagers inside of buildings, big advantage for Blue. <laughs> Big advantage. What are you doing, lady? Waiting for a town center, I bet. Oh, no, and more farms have been placed, and more farms are going to reseed at the worst possible time. Definitely waiting for the wood for a town center. Blue is enough stone for a castle now. And let's see what the plan is now. Castle is going to go up somewhere. Okay, it's just the lumber camp. Awkward when you have auto farm on and then you run out of wood. Um, but yeah, these villagers are going to wander all the way to that wood line. And there's the castle now for Blue. Now, this is now arrived at the point of the game where Blue is a villager lead. Blue is making a castle and can unlock access to one of the best unique units in the game. I talked about the Mongol early game. When the Mongols have a castle up, they become really hard to stop. But why wait for Mangadai when you could just make Cav Archers first, says Hugs. Which, I mean, Cav Archers do fire faster with the Mongols. It's also possible that maybe Hugs doesn't know there's Mangadai in the castle. I don't know what these guys know. But I know that Red is terrified of the worlds. And Red's going to get a few upgrades now. So I forgot about the Blacksmith upgrades until now. Blue killed 18 villagers with one scald attack. Might be the most successful scald attack that Blue's ever landed. But since then, it has been peaceful as can be. It was painful if you're rooting for red. We didn't even see the town bell. But I think red's got a chance, guys. As long as red, you know, musters up the courage to attack at some point. This is a war game. <laughs> Red's like, huh? I thought I was playing versus an AI. I thought oh, this was Sim City. There's been no attempt at moving out. <laughs> Red's Red is like, <laughs> oh, it's so cute, dude. <laughs> Red is like, they attacked me here before. They will attack me here again. So I must, I must, double fortify this area. But realistically, like you really need to lock down the hill. You already have a lot of control here. You've got a whole army protecting this. Hmm. Okay. Well, blue is two town centers producing bills. Red just has one. And we have not seen blue move out yet. Blue waiting for a few more cav archers before doing so, I suppose. Gonna get some upgrades too. And yes, we might see the move. So again, I, I just want to see if when blue is moving the army we see villagers be produced. Now, here's a tip for like 9 out of 10 people who ever watch this video, because let's be honest, m a lot of people don't realize this. The majority of people who watch me barely play, if they play at all, and many people who do play, they're not playing consistently. So it's this is a really hard game. That's why people like Loi, though, because they can relate to it. Um, my tip to you, though, if you're going to move out and attack and you really relate to the whole meme thing I showed earlier, is... Queue up as many vills as you can before you attack. 
you don't have the speed to go back to your town centers while fighting? Sure, that's fine. Just queue up a bunch of stuff and then move out. That's my tip. Great upgrades from blue. Finally, a town center here from red. And red also upgrading some of these units here. But hasn't moved out at all. I, I just... You gotta have some level of aggression. Especially if you take losses. The best time to attack your opponent is, like, immediately after you lose 18 villagers. That's somewhere in the manual. If you guys have the old manual, you'll find it. It's on page 37. Okay, look it up. Best time to attack the enemy is after they killed 18 villagers because you didn't have loom. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. T90, if you just forgot the pro scene for a second, do you think creation speed of Mangadai should be increased? I feel that, except for the top level, the unit is too OP and too hard to prevent the Huns from getting to. Well, first off, Huns can't make Mangadai. Um, so... I, I, no, I think Mangadai balance is fine. Mongols have so many options, right? Like, the Mongol hunt bonus is so helpful at mid to low ranks. Faster firing Cav Archers is still an option for you, which I think is a bit underrated. So, yeah. Trying to forget the pro scene for a second, I, I think balance-wise, Mangadai are in a good spot. Okay, so Blue moved with the scouts to protect the gold and then went and found villagers to go mine the gold. I wonder if Blue will now think about controlling this area. That'd be the systematic approach here. Red has done a sick job producing bills. Honestly. Hmm. The speed looks similar between them. It doesn't seem like it because red isn't attacking ever, but it's done a pretty decent job here. That was a joke? Oh, you were joking. Okay, got it. No, no, no. The Meg and I are fine. I didn't know it was a joke. There was nothing that hinted to sarcasm. <laughs> so... I'm still very curious on if Red is ever going to get this relic. I guess the idea of having a tower there, you've kind of saved it for later, but still. What I like about Blue, too, is that Blue got relevant upgrades. You could tell Blue's a bit more experienced. So... I was saying, wasn't a joke, Stash? I don't know what you're talking about. Anyways, I'm confused. <laughs> no, no, you're confusing me. <laughs> there, there's barely anyone chatting and I'm confused, so maybe it's me. But yeah, uh, back to the back to blue situation. You can tell he knows what's what, right? He's getting the the archer armor for the cav archers, and getting chain barding armor affects the scouts. No, 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 no. You can chat. It's all good. I don't don't let my brain uh, stop you. Don't let my brain slow you down. If I let my mistakes slow people down, we'd have a very different world. Um. Okay, so Blue's just checking the golds now, right? Blue's like, oh, I got this one. This is great. This one isn't being taken. Amazing. What about this one, right? And Blue's going to find out that there is a town here. It is an unloomed town. Again, back to the meme. Blue's not producing any villagers at the moment, but who cares when you can slaughter an entire wood line? I'm concerned. Red did not know how to garrison units last time, and it is very, like... You are very far away from any form of protection. Where are the villas going? Well, they're going to build a castle there now. And dang. I feel really bad that I'm casting this game, mad girl. So, in this instance, I would suggest you click the little bell inside of your town centers. <laughs> to say your villagers save themselves. Anyways, at least Red brought the army over. You know, that's why the army's here. And the scouts that have done so much damage in this game will actually go down. 30 villagers now killed in this game by blue with like, I don't know, 12 different scouts. I forget how many was in the original group. Is there anything uh, HUDs and Mad Girl have done which you'd have done differently? Well, the timings on a lot of things, the idle TC time, upgrades, movement. Like, yeah, there's a bit of a difference. Uh, between how we would all analyze and play the game. But honestly, the biggest tweak for Red is just garrison units. Like, that's the, that's the only thing. Red comes to me and says, hey, T90, give me tips. Garrison. 
I also have a little TC Tips video, by the way, woo woo, uh, where it talks about other tiny tips with the town centers. It's been out for almost a year now. And I'm still seeing mid elo and low elo players not do some of those tips. There's still some other TC tips I could give in a second edition, but I've been really busy, so maybe later. Oh, yeah, Loom is also a plus. That's true. But it's, so, it's still so cute from Red. Like, you see what happened where Red made the second TC, and now it's just completely forgotten about this. It's like, we have enough in this territory. We need to expand in our secondary territory. Whereas, like, AoE competitive RTS mindset is we need to produce more everywhere. So, yeah. Um, Blues and Imp. I think encountered this tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least encountered encountered the foundation way earlier so is now gonna go ram this tower down red's got some consistency to build production red's getting decent enough upgrades it is is pretty much just getting every upgrade red's got knights ballista elephants it's got an interesting group of units no one has the relic yet i'm a little disappointed by that when I saw this tower, I thought that this relic was going to be Red's biggest focus. I think there's a chance that Blue holds against the first attack here from... Uh, or Red holds against the first attack here from Blue. I really do. We haven't seen any Imperial Age upgrades come in yet, but okay, take it back. We are going to have Heavy Cav Archer and then also Parthian Tactics. List Elephants. Watch this. Ready? Bless you. That was just... That was horrible. Um, we got another castle here from Mad Girl. I was trying to think. Ballista Elephants. How do they do against Cav Archers? I think they do pretty good. Because they've got lots of HP. They do pass-through damage. But it's still a Castle Age Ballista Elephant. Yeah, and this is without Bracer. This is without Chemistry. Also, Cav Archers just cost wood and just cost gold. We've got stone walls from Mad Girl. Unfortunately, you can't actually wall the little marsh here. Which I'm sure is frustrating here to Mad Girl. And yeah, Blue's just kind of protecting the choke point for the time being. Uh, went back home to research some upgrades. But is starting to mass trebs as well and is kind of ready to go. Mad Girl still producing villagers. Has had less TC idle time, but also lost 30 vils. Actually lost 31. Mad Girl lost 31. Uh, one must have been to a wolf somewhere. And blues. Like, these Mangadai look pretty cool. I'll queue up some of those. And it's now bringing forward the traps. Great video on the death animations. Thank you. I was hoping people would like it. I, I wanted it to be... You know, I wanted to add some more unique videos. Um, it was a bit cheesy, but I think people like that. I had fun with it. Yeah, so I think Red picked Khmer due to the ease at which it is to make whatever building you want. Not having to unlock different types of buildings was cool uh, and, and really helped Red. And then also being able to build the farms wherever was maybe a reason. I actually think I don't know the biggest reason Red might have picked Khmer. Maybe it was even random Civ. But the fact that Red made farms around a mill here tells me that maybe Red didn't pick Khmer for the farms. It's got a big army. But Blue's got a strong army and also is going to have some siege. But I think Red is enough to kill this, especially if the Ballista Elephants are hitting shots behind the Knights. Red's really making a lot of these things. But they're all kind of spread out. Like right here, we've got 20 army. Right here, we've got uh, 20 army. Right here, we've got 15 army. I can't math exactly, but... Nice job from Blue, who's consistently set some scouts around to the stones and the gold. And Blue's probably having a good old time right now. And Ballistas. They cost a lot of food and gold. So Imp isn't really a possibility for Red if Red continues to make this many Ballista Elephants. Nice reaction time for Blue there. 
The red wants to wall even more over here. And blue figures this is my time because red is distracted on the right. And let's see. If all the ballistas were in this spot right now, I think they could kill the cab archers. The knights would have to be there as well, though. And, okay, blue, you're cheating, dude. Don't micro. What is this? Controlling your units? I'm obviously on team red right now. Red seems to be struggling a little bit. I'm a little curious on red as well. Would you guys say that red could be playing on a controller? Because it has the Xbox symbol next to red's name. But what's so freaking stupid about it, and I still can't believe the devs didn't change it, is it shows the Xbox symbol next to your name if you play on the Microsoft Store and also if you're playing on a physical Xbox. Maybe some of Red's weaknesses could be explained by playing on a console, but I, I personally think the APM would be a bit different. That seems to be like it could be keyboard versus keyboard. Or keyboard and mouse versus keyboard and mouse. That blue's KD is just incredible. And Red still kind of just trying all the options, right? Tried some knights, tried some crossbows, tried some ballistas. Try some Meganels now. It just seems like Red doesn't really know what to do. You can play mouse and keyboard on console, no? Yeah, you, you could. But my point is, is I would like to know if someone's playing on console or, or PC. I think it's a very safe bet that this is PC versus PC. Because in order to play on a console against someone who's not playing on a console, you have to opt into it. Um, and and I, like, I don't know who would ever do that because you're just... Let's face it. I, there's a lot of people who play on console, but the truth is the potential of this game, if you want to get good, is all about keyboard and mouse. It is so much easier to get the most out of Age of Empires 2 if keyboard and mouse. So... I don't know why someone on a controller would want to make their lives more difficult, but it is a possibility. Yeah, Blue just seems to understand the Civ, understand the upgrades, and honestly, Blue has is, is not done that stellar job economically compared to Red in this game, if you really think about it, because Red has done a consistent job at producing, which is half the battle in this game, but... Has a great idea of resource control. And, you know, may looks like maybe has played an extra 50 or 100 games. Or at least has watched a lot. People want faster matchmaking? Maybe. But, the, the I think the average player on a controller would rather wait two minutes for a fair matchup than have an unfair matchup. So. I don't know. Blue is attacking just consistently enough where red is never going to make it to imp. And the cab archers are doing good enough. Certainly cost effectively. Where I think it's a never ending cycle here. We do have this army still over here. Blue will run into it. Uh, Blue is also building in Mangadai. Do Mangadai shred Ballista Elephants? Because Ballista Elephants are classified as Siege. Does anyone know? Like, do they do bonus damage against Ballista Elephants? I think they would shred them without bonus damage, but I'm curious. Red's like, oh, University Techs. Let's just get all these. We forgot some stuff. Murder Holes, Fortified Wall, Guard Tower. Blue's army just, it just can't be stopped. Mangot, I do bonus damage against ballistas? Okay, well, that's a problem then. Because these things are already getting wrecked by cab archers. Man, Blue is having the time of his life right now. Oh, this must make him feel so good. Nothing like a good old stomp when you're a 500 ELO player. Because some of the games could be a grind, I'm sure. Formal definition of shred? I don't know, doing more damage than the Cav Archers are doing right now. <laughs> mad girl is crazy. She is mad. She's not the Mad King. She's the Mad Queen. She's like, we will wall. We will wall it out. <laughs> Red's like, this is fine. We got this. 
I know on good authority that there are some people watching right now who will resign if they lose one villager to man-at-arms in early feudal. There are people who have so little fight in them, especially after like a long day at work or whatever, stressful day. They load up the game, they're like, I want to play because I watched T90 do this video. And then they lose one unit and they're out of there. They leave immediately. There's so many people who are like that. And then Red has those 41 villagers, 40 to the enemy army, one to a wolf. Doesn't have loom. And, you know, it's just like, I'm going to wall this up. We've got this. I can play defense. Oh, God. Here come the elephants from this side. And, well, I think we know exactly what's going to happen. But, you know, Red's like, I got this. Just going to wall it up. Wall it up. I think Red might have clicked the treb there. Trying to take out the siege. And, I mean, on the bright side, if you click the trebs, you're doing damage to the cab archers as well because of the way the ballista elephants work. But, yeah, um, this is this is looking rough. It is possible and maybe even likely that Red doesn't know how to resign. Red's going imp! Red is going imp! She's such a fighter! Oh, my God! I was going to say, you know, make the joke that she probably doesn't know how to resign because she doesn't have loom. And didn't garrison earlier. I don't think that's too far off. Anyways. Um, the, the triple layer of walls did not happen. And I guess it's good for Red that it didn't. Because it would have given her false security. A false sense of security had she completed it. So now here comes the Cav Archers. They've entered beyond the walls into the castle fire. And they will leave. Blue, can you just make, like, a bunch of siege onagers for me? Your resources are wild. Just wild. <laughs> I honestly, like, ten minutes ago, I was like, damn, there's, there's no way this hits YouTube because this is a stomp and I prefer the games to be close. But at the end of the day, I prefer games to be close because I like entertainment. And you can't say that Red doesn't entertain. <laughs> Red can't wall here, so says, all right, I'll wall towards my other walls here. Respect. I mean, this wall makes way much more, so much more sense than the walls we saw earlier. Okay, mangonels and ballistas. Kind of hard to, to micro all this if you're blue. Blue doesn't have the hill. Didn't see the other mangonel. Red maybe has a chance here, is killing the cab archers. Blue didn't see the mango as more cav archers on the way, though. And we'll probably take out this castle. I mean, Red's got two more. So I think the fight could have been better for Blue, but... It's still going to be a fight that Blue wins. Blue's still going to deny the walls. And, well, Red... You are, you are probably going to run out of ideas very shortly. Zero on gold. No gold in the bank. So much gold put in these armies, right? Siege, crossbows, knights, ballista elephants. And then Manga I have a bonus versus siege, so rip. Yeah, that's true. We are actively seeing Red learn about marsh terrain. I think, here's my theory. Because some people are going to be like, oh god. Okay, we're also seeing Red learn not to make a tower next to armies. But... With that type of thinking, it is possible because Red doesn't attack anyone that Red doesn't know about garrisoning. Because in order to learn you could garrison, you would have to encounter someone doing so. And Red doesn't seem like a player who ever raids. So that would explain it to me. I don't know where those villagers were going for Red. But Red's going to make a, a university. Probably because she expects this one to go down. Or because she can't find it. One or the other. But yeah, okay. Architecture now to keep the, the buildings up a little bit longer. Maybe mom said one more game. Could be it. Mom said one more game and then you've got to do the dishes. And Mad Girl's like, I don't want to do the freaking dishes. The dishes suck. So, you know, Red's still going to fight. 
learning about units, learning what dies to Mangadai and Cav Archers. The answer is everything if you still have Castle Age upgrades. Blue's 544 ELO. Blue's not going to complain. Blue's enjoying watching these units destroy everything right now. Blue's got a bunch of idols, a bunch of armies back here. Blue's not looking at that. Blue's watching the army. This is this is what's fun about this game. Red's going to now try and make skirms. Which is not a bad unit against archers, but we are still missing upgrades. Such as the elite upgrade and, well, everything else. So Red, who worked so hard for these resources, is going to try and spend these resources and is really determined to finish the tower and wall sections on this side to keep sending villagers there 10,000 food for blue not bad 10k food in the bank <laughs> there goes mad girl <laughs> she's sneaking away those who doubted her Shall regret it. Okay, and then the GG's called. Mad Girl, love you. Well played. Uh, honestly, a really good player who I think just takes some time to get going and needs to get Loom and needs to just garrison. That was the main thing. You're kind of like nerfing yourself by not garrisoning there. Well played from Blue. I don't want to take anything away from Blue here, but I really do think with just two tiny tweaks, this becomes a bit of a closer game here. Um, Red had, you know, one of the hardest things about this game down, and that was simply just producing villagers all the time. Uh, props on Red to call the GG. Like to see it. You don't see that all the time in low elo. Here's a look at the KD, which was on screen the whole time. And then uh, economically, obviously Blue did collect more resources, but again, there was some avoidable damage. Let's just say that for Red. And, uh, you know, you work hard to make those villagers. Keep them alive. Like, I actually feel bad. I'm surprised. If this was, like, Stronghold, for anyone who's ever played Stronghold, um, people would have never wanted to come to this town. That's what you have to do in Stronghold. You have to have the conditions be good enough for the people to want to go to work in your town. <laughs> and if the, if the conditions are horrible, which would have been the case here for Red, the people leave. Uh, and it's like, people are leaving your village, sire. And then you have to, to make changes. Um, I might play Stronghold again at some point. There's a new one coming out. I'm a massive noob. Like, I'm a Loey the Legend in Stronghold. I don't know the build orders. I don't know anything. But when the new one comes out, I think I will play it and have a good time. I don't know if I'll upload any videos on it, but yeah. So, uh, not really sure if this is the best Loey the Legend cast ever also not sure if this hits youtube but if it does hope people enjoyed the video nonetheless uh it was some good fun even though it was a little bit stompy good stuff